and thanks for joining us for this uh, Get Your Money Ready for the New Year webinar. Uh, so I'm Heather. Many of you probably seen me in the community, probably seeing all of us in the community. This is this is a mix of like foundation template and community uh, content. We've got Randy, who's a big contributor in the community. And of course, Joseph, our superhero and the creator of the budget plan template. So thanks for joining us. So the agenda for this session is uh, we're going to talk about how to get your foundation template ready for 2023, explore some different options. I'm going to demo one of the options um, in both the Google Sheets foundation template as well as the Excel foundation template. And then Randy's going to dive into demoing the budget plan. Um, so you'll have a good sense of how to set up a great plan for 2023 based on your past year spending some trends there and uh, using the budget plan, which is the awesome solution that Joseph built and shared in the community that's available and available in the Tiller Community Solutions add-on, which Randy will be demoing how to get that. And then lastly, we'll do a Q&A uh, section of the session here. Uh, so some housekeeping with the Q&A. There is a Q&A button in the Zoom controls. You can ask your question at any point, just like as soon as it come um as soon as it comes to mind i see a couple questions that are in there now yes the q a is working um so when you have that question just go ahead and use that q a to go ahead and ask a question and we'll take those questions at the end all right so let me i'll just deal with these existing questions in a little bit all right so the first thing i want to demo here is i first need to quit slack because that's going to be distracting and realize that I didn't have this quite set up as I wanted to with the previous meetings. All right, so I'm here on my Tiller console and I just have a couple sheets linked. These are sheets I'm gonna use to demo. If you're brand new to Tiller, you know, maybe you haven't done this yet and we have some resources we'll be sharing when you get the email tomorrow that'll talk through like any of this sort of initial setup you may not, you may need to do. This is from the perspective that you're already set up in Tiller. You, maybe you've got a few months of historical data already categorized. Maybe you've been with Tiller for a while and you've got all of this year categorized, or maybe you took the time to like manually add that data in. And so the different options, so we've got the Google Sheet here open. The different options for um, getting ready for the new year are documented pretty well in the Help Center. And that, that email that you get tomorrow will also have this resource. So don't worry about trying to go and find this. But I just wanna show you that it's here. This is what you'll get in the resources. And it, it does kind of talk through the different options for you. So I think the first question when you're getting ready to start a new year uh, with your budgeting and your and your transactions is how much history do you need? Um, so if you want the historical budgets in your spreadsheet, you can definitely keep those in there. And then the link to the guide here is going to talk you through the steps that I'm going to demo in a minute um, to, to keep those historical budgets, to add an additional 12 months of budgeting to your existing spreadsheet. So you don't have to start a new sheet or anything like that. Um, the other option, if you just want to kind of start fresh, is to clear your historical budget options. This is not going to be one of the options that I demo, but it's here in the guide for you. There's a there's a couple ways to do it, depending if you're using Google Sheets, if you're using Excel. You may want to make a backup of your sheet, but you can essentially just start, you know, the new year with the existing 12 columns, change the dates, and then like refine the budget targets as needed. Uh, the last option is just starting completely fresh. Um, so you can make a whole brand new spreadsheet fresh from the foundation template. You can make a copy of your existing template and just kind of start um, from there and uh, link that one at the beginning of the year. And the add-on will actually pick up and keep going from there. And so you can, you know, you can just kind of archive your 2022 data and just start fresh in a new 2023 sheet. So like I said, there's lots of options, not going to demo all these. I'm going to really focus on like using the exist existing sheet. And so to do that in the Google Sheets version of the template, your first step is going to be to head over to the category sheet. So you can see that I've got all of my months for 2022. And if you're, you know, you started with Tiller this year, that is the default setup for the foundation template. You get January to December of the current year. To keep using the same spreadsheet and just add an additional 12 months, the steps are pretty easy. Um, you're just gonna add an additional 12 columns to the category sheet. So I'm just selecting column E here. I'm holding the shift key and then I'm clicking 
um, the letter P up here in column P, the header. And then I'm going to right click and then I'm going to say insert 12 columns right. So now I've got these additional 12 columns for my 2023 months. A really quick way uh, to fill in those month headers that you'll want to use is to take this fill handle. It's this little blue square in the lower right corner. It's kind of hard to see because the, the background color is also blue, but there's a little square here. And if you just drag that over to the right, it's going to automatically populate these 2023 months. So now I've got an additional 12 budget months in my category sheet. And then the simplest way to kind of just pre-fill your budget and kind of get started with your budgeting for 2023 with these basic steps is to just select the first cell here for December 2022. And then I always scroll all the way to the bottom because these all have this simple fill uh, formula that's referencing the previous cell. And so then I'm going to select all those, get the fill handle again, and then just drag over to the right. And then at the top, we see that it replicated those same budgets. It just cascaded those forward, right? And so now if I need to just tweak things for 2023, let's say like I'm going to, I don't know, I'm adding a new line to my um, cell phone plan. I can change this to 95 in January for 2023, and then it moves out right for me automatically because of that simple formula. If I need to edit any individual month, I can definitely do that. Maybe I'm going to take another vacation in March, so I want to have a $500 travel budget change that to 500 and then the subsequent month, you know, I change it back to 50 and then the cascading resets. So those are the basic steps in Google Sheets to get those 12 budget months. So then from there, we start to see, okay, now I've got 2023 available. I've got all my months. I can see in March, for example, I've got that $500 travel budget just here. So it's already reflecting like that plan that I started to set up um, for 2023. Same thing with yearly budget. I can, I can move into 2023 here. And then now I've got my 2023 from January to December set up. And that's the sort of next step you'd want to do. If you're just using what's out of the box with the foundation template, those are your steps. You're good to go. You've got your 2023 plan. Um, anything you want to add, Randy, for this, for Google Sheets? Before I move on I to that's Excel. That's a great start, Heather. Okay, so I'm going to briefly demo the Excel steps because they are a little bit different just because there's some nuances between Google Sheets and Microsoft Excel. So let me open my foundation template here uh, that is pretty much the exact same data as that Google Sheets version, uh, but it's just in Excel. And I'm on a Mac, the same steps work on a, on a Windows computer. So once again, same thing, category sheet. So there's some interesting behavior in Excel, and this is why I wanted to make sure I demo it. So what we've done here is first thing you'll need to do, and you should have this in your foundation template. If you're if you're using the Excel foundation template, the sheet should be in there. If you just right click any tab along the bottom and you choose unhide, it will give you this dialogue here. And then you're going to want to unhide this new year tab. And really, this is just in here because the formatting that's expected for those headers in the category sheet for each month is really specific in Excel. So we kind of just try to make this really easy for you by just giving you this new year. And it's got like five years of, you know, months in here. Uh, so I'm just going to hold the shift key after selecting that first January 2023, click on the last for December 2023. I'm going to copy using control C. You can also right click, choose copy, head back to my category sheet. And then I'm going to select this first empty header cell where I want my January 2023 to go. And then I'm just going to do a normal paste, control V or right click and just paste. And paste. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Let me try that again. I don't know if it's like zoomed. Oh, there it goes. Looks like it okay. went, Heather. Okay, sweet. Okay, so now I've got these months for 2023 in here. And then what you'll notice is that, you know, all this is green now, right? And so I've got my table boundary has automatically been expanded because of the way I just did like a normal paste into the, the category sheet here. Um, the category sheet is set up as an Excel table in Microsoft Excel. And that allows us to uh, take advantage of some of the performance benefits of using Excel tables in the formulas that are running in the monthly budget and yearly budget sheets. But 
what's interesting about it, and this is a little bit more technical, but just so you have some background on, um, you know, why it expanded automatically and why I'm talking about tables is that the, you know, the format here, it's not like a date format or it's like a special date format. Maybe Randy can maybe talk through that, but, um, so doing that just regular paste, you know, not pasting that as values or anything allows the table to expand as necessary to make sure that these get incorporated. But what I don't quite know why this happens is that, and I've tried it multiple different ways, but basically it, it formats these cells below them all as that weird custom thing. So like if I try to put a budget number in right now, it's going to show up as a date. I think this is just an Excel thing. Haven't quite figured it out. We haven't investigated it too much. I don't know that there's anything that we can do to fix it. And so the steps in the guide just say to select all this data and you can just easily select it all by holding the shift key but um, in between clicking. And then you just go and you change it to currency. And then I get, boom, there we go. Um, and these are set up as formulas, very similar to the other one. So dragging them over doesn't work when when it, you don't format it first. So now I can actually do that same drag step, click the fill handle, drag it over, and then I've got my budget numbers. But you just have to make sure you reformat all those cells as currency. Um, the other thing I would say is like just going ahead and we don't really want to, yeah, we don't want to move the, the table um, boundary down just because then it like is including unnecessary cells in the table. So then your formatting is a little different, but it's just the quirkiness with Excel, I think. So anything to add there, Randy, or do you want to elaborate on the the table date stuff? Yeah, Excel just has a weird rule where essentially those headers have to be text for it to work as an Excel table, whereas in Google Sheets, it's a little more flexible. It lets it be a number or a date. Yeah, yeah. And you can't use formulas. So that's why you can't just drag <laughs> over from the right like we did in, in Google Sheets. So that's why we gave you the paste from the new year tab. But then same thing, you know, here in the monthly budget, I've got my 2023 um, months available with the budgets that I just set. Same thing in the yearly budget, I can go and I can flip this to 2023 um, when the time is right. And so the advantage of using this option from those different options that I explored is that you can go ahead and you can start planning for 2023 now. Whereas some of the other options where you're starting fresh, or maybe you're just going to overwrite the dates that are mentioned in that help article, you can't really start your planning until the new year starts. And so that's why we, we often demo this approach, because like now we can start gaining insights from our past year spending to help fuel the budget amounts that we want to set here. Um, so I think, you know, the next step, like once you've got the technical pieces set up in the category sheet setting up your columns, setting up your rough budgets, is understanding what types of changes you might want to make to your budget. Um, and, and that is fueled by your actual spending data. So if you've spent the time categorizing your transactions through the year, you've got a ton of data that you can actually use to help you make real change for your budget and your finances in the year to come. Um, and so a couple just in, out of the box ways to do that in the foundation template are just using the yearly budget. You can you can flip back to 2022 and just kind of look at your trends here. You can see, you know, what was the overall budgeted cash flow for the entire year? And then how did I do? You know, I'm actually coming in ahead of what I thought I did by a little bit. I can look at each month to look at the actual cash flow versus the budgeted cash flow and using the data that's here in the yearly budget sheet, I can then fine tune those category budgets for 2023 to make changes based on that just a little bit of analysis. Uh, in the next part of the demo, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Randy so he can demo Joseph's budget plan and talk through getting even more detailed about how to analyze trends from last year and use this budget plan to help you set up a rock solid budget for 2023. So I'm gonna stop sharing and let Randy share. Awesome, thank you, Heather. Um, so yeah, that was a great demo on how to get started, just kind of setting up the, the tooling to have those budgets available and also to flatline those budgets across uh, 2023. And what we're gonna show now is how to leverage in a, in a way more powerful way uh, your history and to create um, budgets that are really detailed and fine tuned for 2023. All this builds off of an amazing tool called budget plan that Joseph built. We're really lucky to have him on here today. Uh, he developed this on his own, uh, published it in the community, has done a ton of documentation, has like responded to all sorts of user requests. 
um, and uh, and basically um, shared it now through the Tiller Community Solutions add-on. And so we're going to jump right in to uh, how to get started with that tool. Just find the right window here, and I'll share. Uh, this is the right one, right, Heather? Okay. Um, and let me just get some of these windows out of the way so I can see this a little better. Okay. So. Um, Here's the budget Heather just set up. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start by opening. I have a few too many extensions, but we're going to go to the Tiller Community Solutions add-on. Hopefully, a lot of you have that. It's a free um, add-on that we publish, and we're going to open the sidebar. This add-on has um, some workflows uh, that are pretty powerful, CSVs, uh, uh, sort of a budget cleanup. Um, uh, you can see all sorts of workflows we have in here. Uh, reports, um, but also it's the home to a lot of templates that are published uh, partly by sort of experimental uh, templates published by Tiller, but also a number of uh, templates published by community members like Joseph. So we're going to go and install the budget plan here. Um, and you'll see down in the bottom right, it's kind of putting it in. It just takes a few seconds. And one thing that is probably not super well advertised with these uh, community templates is almost all of them have a learn and discuss uh, button here and that links into the community where the documentation for that that template lives. In this case again Joseph's done an amazing job with screenshots lots of installation instructions um, and it also a pretty incredible 27 minute video that goes into more detail than we will on this call and actually this demo is based on. But right now what I'm going to do is going to grab this one formula that's super important out of the documentation and copy this because we're going to need it to basically link we're going to build a budget you'll, you'll see this in a minute but we're going to build a budget using these cells here and the budget's going to fill into this this area. And this formula will take the budget that we build here in a very granular way and put it back in our category sheet where all the other sheets that you depend on, like the monthly budget, the yearly budget can leverage the data that we're, we're pulling together here. So jumping back to our category sheet, we're going to undo a little bit of the work um, Heather did here. We're going to delete this section here, all those formulas that replicate the budgets across, and we're going to replace it with this formula that Joseph made. And I'm going to give one quick caveat. This formula is built to go in the first cell, the first month of the budget, and so we're going to need to make a very small change. And Joseph actually goes through and shows how to do that in more detail in the video. But for now, you're going to have to trust me that where it usually points to column E, we're going to point it to column Q. So here's the formula I copied and it, right here is kind of the magic reference to the column we're going to change this to Q because we're 12 cells over um, doing a second year budget in our category sheet. So when I press that that's going to put that uh, formula pulling from budget plan into the cell i'm going to copy this all the way down to the bottom. Uh, did the a copy paste there now i'm going to copy this whole column and paste that across and when I scroll back up you're going to see a bunch of zeros because that's the information pulling from the budget plan that's not yet populated. The next thing we're going to do, and again, this is all in Joseph's video, is we're going to we're going to seed our budget plan with our full list of categories down to the transfer area. We're going to take all the income and expense categories and copy those. And in this spot right here, we could we could come in here and just pick these one by one, but it would take a while and we might miss one. And so what we're going to do instead is just paste as values all those category names. And so at this point, we have a row for every category in our in our category sheet. And we're also going to enable all these rows. Joseph has a feature where you can sort of enable or disable rows. We want all these to be enabled. All right, so we've got a pretty good start here. We've got a, a row for every category. We've got them enabled. And now, now we get to start using this very powerful frequency selector to pick um, how we want to fill all the months of the year. I think two that we'll start with are, um, we'll use this past category. This looks at the prior year. Oh, shoot, I forgot one thing. This is important. Um, this formula here points to the, essentially the first uh, month in your budget. You can see minimum in the first row of the categories. If you look at our category sheet, the minimum, the lowest month is January, 2022. To make this be a budget for January 2023, we're going to just override this this uh, formula with 1123. And you can't see it, but it basically also that change cascaded across all these other months. So they're now they're also pointed at 2023. So when we come in here and we do past category, what it's going to do is it's going to look for our cell phone category over there to the left in column E and pull our actuals from last year 2022, the, the prior year to the budget. And it's going to fill those across the top here. So you see that. 
Right now, I'm also going to do the same thing on this, our utilities. One thing that's pretty cool about making your budget this way, actually, we can just drag this all the way down, is that right now our budget is made entirely from actuals from the prior year. It's not actually referencing the prior year's budget, it's just the actuals. And for some categories like utilities, this is really valuable where there might be some seasonality. You might use more water to uh, water a lawn in the summer or more heat to heat your home in the winter. And so this actually might be a really good way to model something like utilities where there's seasonality. On the cell phone though, you can see here, for whatever reason, there's maybe a couple of transactions that didn't get categorized. We kind of have a little bit of an inaccurate picture here of what's happening. Um, you can see that uh, the total expense was 787, but there's some missing and it looks like our cell phone payment is about $87. So a couple of things we could try here first, we could try a different frequency option. This is the past category average over year. So it's going to take that whole year, $787 and divide it by 12 and just put that in every month flatlined. But you can see that's not really accurate because that is sort of letting that number get um, driven down by those missing values. And, um, and so what we're going to do is use a different frequency option called monthly here. Uh, and we're just going to put in the $87. And you can see now we're starting to build this budget where we have these granular controls we can edit it very easily and there's kind of this audit history and I want to show you that these numbers go back. into here on our um, on our budget with this formula so now all those $87 are getting pushed here and these are the numbers from last year um, that we got with those past category. Another really cool feature here is let's just say because of inflation there's this multiplier column because of inflation. Let's just say we want to acknowledge that our utility bill has gone up 10%. So we could put in 1.1 and it'll multiply all the values for next year's budget by 10% more. And you can see here, these all pop up. And again, in our category sheet where all our other tiller spreadsheets are driven from, those numbers bumped up by 10%. So let me show you a few more things um, that this tool can do that I think demonstrate some of the power. Um, there are lots of other frequency options. I'll demo a few more. One of them, it was, we'll try with groceries. So you can see here, our groceries are um, about $250 a month. Let's just say $50 a week is how we want to budget for groceries. We can use a weekly budget by coming in here, clicking this over to weekly, and then putting in $50. And one really neat thing that um, this budget does, this budget plan does, is in months with more weeks, it will have uh, five instances of that $50, but it knows that some of these months only have four instances of that and it'll have a lower budget, which might really help your planning. Another thing you can see here is, this is the yoga line. Um, you can see here, maybe this is an annual uh, gym member, Heather's smiling, <laughs> uh, an annual gym membership here, maybe uh, in, in uh, August. We can use an annual budget here and uh, you'll see it kind of zeros out and we'll just put that $289 as a one time cost it defaults here, but we can set the start date in this cell here to 8123 and that we can ha now have kind of this audit history of okay that's an annual expense and that should be in just that cell. And again, all these changes are cascading into our category sheet let's look at another example. Um, right now, you can see we're getting paid about, let's just, uh, well, $4,000 a month. Again, I'm not quite sure what's happening here, but uh, let's say that we really got paid on a biweekly cadence. You can put this into weekly here, uh, and um, we'll, for now, let's put in, let's just say on a biweekly cadence, that would be $2,000. Um, and right now, that number's too high because we're actually not, we're getting paid biweekly, not weekly. The way this mult column works is for some frequency types, it multiplies the amount. Um, but for some frequency types, like a weekly, it actually sort of changes the period interval. And so in this case, if we double that interval uh, to biweekly, you can see now this looks right. We're getting paid perhaps three, three pay periods in January and then two in February. But this allows you to have sort of a different way of modeling the way your paycheck comes in that might be more reflective than sort of flatlining that across the year. Um, let me give two more examples and then i'll show you one kind of analysis tool. Another cool thing that's not immediately obvious from this is that you can actually have multiple rows for a single a single um, category so let's enable a new uh, addition to our budget let's just say we want to put a European vacation well actually let me do one one quick fix here. On our travel here, you can see we took a trip last year in March. You see, it's kind of like there's about um, 
there's about $600 kind of average over the year, more than this one month. So if we just said, let's just say we wanted to basically put in a little bit of baseline travel money and strip out that one trip, our, our budget would look more like that. And now let's, so we've tra taken out last year's sort of big trips and now let's add in a big trip for next year. So we're gonna come down here, do a European vacation. Um, we're going to put it in the travel category um, and we're going to we're going to say that this trip costs two thousand dollars and we're going to go from um, between uh, June and July. And here we're going to use a different type of frequency called. Uh, having a little trouble fighting the zoom thing here spread over period, and so this will take this two thousand dollars or three thousand dollars or whatever we pick and spread that over the periods that um, will be on that trip. And one really neat thing here, let me put that back to 2000 because it's a little easier to see. One really neat thing here is that because we have multiple travel uh, sort of categories here, it will add them. So it'll be a $50 flat, flat line across the year with a $1,000 bump in just June and July. And you can see that right here. Um, so here's our $50 kind of across the start of the year. And then you can see this little bump where it's basically saying, okay, I see that there's multiple contri contrib uh, contributors to that and I'm, I'm adding them together. And then let's just do one more similar one. Let's just say you wanted to plan a home remodel uh, or bathroom remodel. This one's a pretty similar example, but um, in, in the fall of next year, uh, and we'll use this spread over period again. And let's just say that costs $10,000. You'll see again how this kind of pops in here. And a neat thing about this enable disable feature is let's just say you get into the year a little bit and you say, you know what, that's just not in the cards anymore or we don't we want to do something else with that money. You can just disable it and it'll pull it right out of your budget because this is kind of live linked into your category sheet. Um, so that's kind of the basics of how this works. I want to show one more thing that Joseph's done to kind of supercharge this because he's kind of thinking ahead, not just like how do I build a budget, but how do I like analyze it and, and fine tune it. Let me show you how this changeable feature works. I think it's really cool. Uh, what this lets you do is sort of identify categories that you have a lot of leverage on and ones that you don't have as much leverage on. So let's go and spend a minute setting that up. Um, it's pretty difficult to change how much your cell phone bill is, maybe a little less difficult to change uh, your utilities a car payment that that's probably not going to change um, so we can go through and rate these uh, these categories for how much how much we're able to influence them. Um, I'm just going to try and do this pretty quickly here. Uh, one more second, let me drag this one down and. Um, paycheck, maybe not so much going to argue with the boss and then uh, here we have rent also kind of tricky tricky. All right. So you can see here, we immediately have this color coding that says, you know, hard to change, easy to change, maybe neutral. Um, but one thing that is pretty neat over here is Joseph's created this importance or kind of like, it's like a power ranking on, lev on, on the amount of leverage you have over something. So this is kind of a mix of both, not just how much, how easy it is to change, but also how much money's in the bucket, because something with, uh, a small amount of money that's easy to change might not be very helpful in, in modifying your budget, but something that has a lot of money but is kind of hard to change might actually be an easy place to, to change. And so here you can kind of just see which 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 of these are by by power ranking um, the the low hanging fruit for modifying your budget. And again, because Joseph done a really cool job with these multipliers, there's some really simple ways to come in here and say, you know what, my pat, uh, auto and gas, you know, I'm gonna try and drive a little less. So let's put 80% there or groceries. It's still kind of low hanging fruit. I spent a lot of money there. I wanna, I'm gonna do $45 there. And as you do this, you'll start to see your uh, net cash flow for the year um, change based on those settings. So I'm gonna stop there um, and just remind you that there's a lot more that can be done with these frequency options and we can get into that a little bit in the Q&A. Uh, I think that this sheet is super cool and I'm gonna be using this to, to plan my 2023 budget. Anything to add Heather or Joseph uh, before Thanks. we go to questions? Thanks Randy. Uh, I was gonna just ask Joseph if he had anything he wanted to share or elaborate on. Uh, no, I think that that was a great uh, overview, uh, uh, less <laughs> verbose than my video was, I uh, got straight to the point. So uh, um, yeah, and uh, kind of look, I tried answering a few of the questions already in the Q&A. Um, 
Uh, thankfully, there is a recording of this that you'll be able to go back to and look uh, look at that as well as the video that I have posted for the for the budget plan template. So uh, hopefully, between those two, that'll get it, get you off to a good start. Um, I'm always happy to answer questions in the community. So if you post any questions there after this is all over, uh, I'll try to answer uh, as soon as I can and uh, help you along however I can. Thanks, Joseph. Uh, yeah, just to kind of jump right to that one, Steve Steve says, can we celebrate Joseph for how helpful he is in the community? I certainly appreciate Joseph. So thank you so much, Joseph. Just wanted to, to jump right to that one. Um, we can go ahead and dive into the questions here. If you have other questions, go ahead and get those in the Q&A. Um, I've tried to go through and also just type answers to a few of them, but I've, I've cherry picked the ones I think are great for discussion. Um, so Patricia asks, can we use both Google Sheets and I'm guessing she meant Microsoft Excel, she just said spreadsheet and at a general level, yes, you can use with Tiller, you can use both Google Sheets and Microsoft Excel. Um, you can link the, you know, mix and match accounts, link the same accounts, try them side by side at the same time. Um, so you can definitely use both. You don't have to just pick one or the other. Um, so that's a great question, Patricia. Carl asked, do not really need to keep historical budgets. However, I really want to keep the historical balances to track changes in net worth. Are there any special considerations? The only thing I would say there um, is if you continue using the same spreadsheet, um, then you will have all of your net worth, including any, or your balances for tracking net worth, including any manual accounts that you're tracking manually. Like maybe you're tracking the value of um, your house or your car, other assets or other accounts that Tiller can't automate. Those manual accounts and balances that you've been using Tiller money feeds to uh, manually update and insert balances are local to the particular spreadsheet. So if you did decide that you wanted to start fresh in a new spreadsheet, um, that's just something to keep in mind. Like those manual account balances wouldn't be in that new spreadsheet. Um, and so you could either copy and paste those over or just continue using the same sheet. Carl, it sounds like you don't really care to keep historical budgets. And so you could use the option that I described where you just change the, um, change the budget months in the category sheet and sell E1, you can just change that to 1-1-2023. One, one, you don't have to add those extra columns. It'll just basically update that for 2023. Um, so that's an option there regarding that question. Andy says, so I started using this in September, moved over from envelopes when they announced ending service. So my spreadsheet goes from September, 2022 to August, 2023. Can I just add the rest of 2023? Yes, absolutely. You can just add whatever additional number of columns between, I guess, September and December and just pull the formula over exactly like I did in the demo. Um, and then just, then you'll have all of 2023. So you can definitely um, do it that way. Cause the cool thing about the monthly budget, I don't know, Randy, if you can kind of demo this while I'm talking about it, the yearly budget, I mean, um, is that it's, it's kind of like a sliding lens. Like it just displays data based on whatever months and year you pick up there. So like Randy's got it set right now for, you know, let's just pick a different month. And it's showing you a 12 month period between those, those two, starting with that first month there. Um, so it's, it's like a sliding view. So it doesn't matter that you have like, you know, you don't have 24 months, you maybe have like 18 months or whatever it is. Um, so that's a good question. Uh, Roger asked, can you demo this in Excel too, please? So I think he may, may have been talking about just the basic steps of adding the months to the category sheet, which we did, de we did demo. We weren't planning to demo the budget plan um, steps in Microsoft Excel, but there is a budget plan that Joseph also built for Excel. Uh, getting it into your Excel workbook does require um, some manual steps to download a copy of it from the community here, and then you would move it into that work um, from that workbook into your foundation template workbook. And I believe it should work pretty much exactly the same. I don't know, Joseph, if you have any anecdotes to share about how the budget plan setup or config might be different in Excel than it is for Google Sheets. I haven't explored that much. Um, I haven't. I don't use the Excel one that much myself. I just basically translated it over for people that um, do want to use it. I, I think the the date thing, updating the date to um, January of 23, 
might be a little tricky as, as you had pointed out in your video that the headers behave a little differently there. Um, so I, I think if you're just, if you're not adding additional columns, if you're just starting fresh with like a 2023 categories sheet, mm -hmm. I think it should work fine because it just pulls the information from there. Uh, if you're trying to um, add additional columns and keep your old data, uh, then it might be a little trickier. Um, if you're in that situation, uh, throw me a question in the community and uh, I can explore that and, and see if I can explain better how to, how to do that. Cool, thanks. All right, Alan asks, will we be covering ways to archive historical data that I no longer need in the Act Tiller workbook? Um, wasn't planning to demo that. Let's see how many questions we get and what we get through here. It looks like we got quite a lot of questions. It is documented um, in the Help Center in that article that I was sharing at the beginning of the session on how to just basically archive the data. In a nutshell, you can just clear the, you can make a copy of your Google Sheet or your workbook um, in Google Sheets. It's from the file menu. In Excel, you would just do a save as so that you have an archive. That's your archive of your historical data. And then you can just clear out the transactions data um, for 2022 um, once 2023 starts. That's sort of like a, a way to kind of start fresh and keep using the same workbook and have a backup of your historical data. All right, Jay Kelly asks, I plan to archive my 2022 and start fresh, maybe change up some categories. How do I get ready to do that in advance of January 1 so I can do the switch over on that date? Um, I think the option there, the best option is to make a copy of your existing workbook, um, which you can do from the file menu, and use that as your 2023 prep. So you would then in the copy, you can just name it, you know, like 2023 workbook. You can change your categories sheet headers to 2023. So in cell E1, you would just, Randy, can you demo this in the category sheet? I know it's probably going to mess with the stuff that we did with the budget plan here, but you just change it right in cell E1 um, in the copy. And then you refine your categories, your budget, so on. You can clean up your transaction sheet. You can clear out all your 2022 data, 2022 data. And then when 2023 rolls around, you can link the same work, that copy of, of your workbook um, to Tiller using the Tiller Money Feeds add-on. And the atom will actually pick up where it left off because um, it, it's kind of tracking like in some sort of invisible hidden data, like the last fill that happened. And so in the copy, it'll just pick up where it left off. It won't create a bunch of duplicates in the spreadsheet. So that's like an easy way to um, kind of start fresh and be able to start planning. And that is documented in that help article uh, that I shared at the beginning and that you'll get in the resources tomorrow. Okay. Uh, once you create your 2023 budget in your category sheet, would you then go and hide the 2022 columns? That is totally up to you. You can definitely do that. It's just a simple right click, um, select all those columns, and then there's an option to either hide or group. I actually like to group mine because sometimes I want to be able to look back um, at what I did for 2022, and then it's an easy way to like hide and unhide without actually hiding and unhiding. So great question, Marianne. All right, uh, let's see here. Uh, someone's asking about update on portfolio holdings tracking functionality in the future. Unfortunately, I don't have an update for you on that. It's, um, you know, it is something that we have a beta wait list for. I don't have any updates on release plans or anything on that, but great question. All right, let's see here. Uh, do someone asked, you generally suggest Google Sheets version unless there's a compelling reason someone wants to use Excel. So Google Sheets versus Excel in general with Tiller, there's, we're way ahead on like features with Google Sheets. We do anticipate building out a lot of the features that are available for Google Sheets for Excel over the next year and on. Um, Google Sheets, I just personally find to be easier, more intuitive to use. Um, it's all in the cloud. The collaboration is a little bit better, but Excel, I think, is um, generally better from like a performance perspective because it's often running like locally on your computer versus Google Sheets in the cloud when you get like years and years of data and have a lot of complex dashboards can start to slow down. Um, so it's really, you know, personal preference, but um, I don't know, Randy, if you if you have anecdotes about like Google Sheets versus Excel. I'm in the same boat as you. I 
uh, yeah, long time Excel user, then got into Sheets with Tiller. At this point, I really like Sheets better. And I, as Heather noted, we've got we've got a lot more um, functionality there right now. Um, so that's my preference. But um, but I think the the basic feeds on Excel are really uh, doing well. Um, and so I, that's obviously an option too. Okay, cool. So Laura asks, will you show the formula change in the budget plan that takes away the min column and makes it January, 2023 again? Does that make sense to you, Randy? I think you're on mute. All right, having a little trouble with the keyboard here. So um, it's not so much a formula change. What Joseph has in this cell right here, and again, this is in his video in a little bit more detail, but in this M3 cell, he has a formula that goes and looks in the top row of your category sheet and finds the minimum date and starts and basically puts the, the lowest date you have in your category sheet in, in, into, the, into that cell of your, the start of your new budget. That doesn't work in this case because we actually are trying to budget for essentially a, a date that's year out. So all I did was uh, basically typed over the formula and hard coded the date 1 1 2023. And then you can see because these other cells here, it's under this, but because these are formula driven here, you can see the formula up, up in here. Basically, once I change this one, all these other dates are also going to move into 2023. Got it. Okay. And you, you can see there's a little note on that cell, that little black triangle um, explains that a little bit as well. Yeah, those are super helpful. We try to like put those in, in certain cells in our templates too. I think it's often like a potentially overlooked like feature of Google Sheets, like people maybe sometimes don't pay attention to it. So it's good to call that out. All right, let's keep going through the questions here. I'm just kind of cherry picking some of these. Um, Evaldo asks, what happens to your historical data from previous years? So from a foundation template perspective, um, if you're staying in the same sheet and you're not intentionally removing that data, then it's going to be in the sheet. I mean, in this demo sheet, I think there's data all the way from 2020. Um, so it just continues to accumulate in the sheet unless you make an archive of your sheet and then clear out your previous um, data. As far as the budgets go, if you use the steps that I shared where you're adding additional budget months to the category sheet, then you're going to have those historical budget amounts in your category sheet. Um, if you made a copy as an archive and then kind of wiped those by just typing over the cell E1 date, um, then you'd have that in the copy. So it really just depends on if you want to continue using the same sheet or if you want to make an archive of your sheet and then kind of start fresh in that sheet. But that is a good question. And I should mention related to that, if you use budget plan, because it's using formulas to fill in the category sheet, once you bump budget plan forward to look at 2023, all your 2022 numbers are going to zero out because they're not going to find any data anymore. Mm -hmm. So what you might want to do first is copy all of your 2022 numbers. Mm -hmm. And what you can do is select copy and then just do a paste uh, values only and it will get rid of those formulas and it'll just put the numbers in their place so that when you do then update budget plan to 2023, uh, these will no longer be formulas that'll zero out, mm -hmm. they'll be numbers. So they'll just stay the way they are. So that's a, a way of kind of archiving those numbers if you want to keep them around. And be able to view them in budget plan too, right? So that, cause you can, you can, can you look because it, it is would reference like some previous budget numbers as well, right? Or um, no, budget plan okay. wouldn't look at those at all. It looks back at the live data in your okay. transaction sheet. Got it. Got it. Okay. Cool. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, though, but that would also allow those numbers to be preserved, though, for other templates mm -hmm. that look back in time uh, in yeah, your category that, in the category that, sheet. That makes sense. Okay. Great. Uh, let's see here. Can you add new categories to the budget that were not part of 2022? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you just add new categories right at the bottom of the category sheet um, and then fill in the relevant data. Are there special steps? I guess like the example you shared, Randy, in budget plan of the European vacation, does that automatically get transferred to this or how does that work? How did that work? I didn't see how. Well, in that in that example, we were overloading a travel category. So here, oh, basically, okay. we added another. Uh, essentially, we're we're basically creating a sum of multiple travel entries. Mm. Um, but 
if you wanted to add a new category, like let's just say remodel, mm -hmm. um, you would you would want to start by adding that here. Um, mm -hmm. mm. And then once it's here, it will be available in in budget plan uh, as as a as a new option. Um, got it, got so, it. so start in the category sheet. OK, that makes sense. All right. Uh, Melvin asks, which day of the week do the weekly items get linked to a month? I think that's specific to the budget plan. This is for you, Joseph. Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question. I think the question is, um, for example, uh, we had these examples like uh, groceries. These numbers are a little weird to me since they have these modifiers on them. Why don't I see groceries? Um, so, so like here, if we have, I, I think the question is like here, how, how does it, if it says there's five weeks worth of uh, grocery allowances, um, but I assume one of those weeks is a partial, like essentially how does that math work? Like, is it like the first day of the, the first day of the month and then seven days, seven days, seven days. And then even though the partial is, is credited in January, I think that's what the question is. Okay, um, yeah, it's been a while since I built the formulas, but um, mm -hmm. I, I think it's the beginning of a week that it grabs that. I, I, I think it's kind of assuming that you're gonna need that money on the first occurrence. So it includes it in there. So like the, if, if the first day of the week falls within that period, then it'll be counted. That's how I think I had it set up. And is that right, Sunday so like or Monday? Sunday, probably. Because <laughs> that might be. Or maybe you answering this, Joseph. <laughs> and it's okay if you don't know right this second, because I'll have all the Q and A in the community, and we can come. We can like. I guess anything that's based on uh, uh, on that type of weekly, I, I would consider Sunday to be the first okay. day. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure in the formulas if that makes a difference or not. Uh, yeah, and if, if you have a more in-depth question or, or more details that you would like, uh, post something in the community and I can look deeper into this into yeah. stuff because, uh, again, this was a couple months ago that I, I built this and some of these formulas are pretty yeah. involved. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I have to go back and do uh, a little bit of research on my own work. For sure. I think that's very common. We've heard when you like build a template with complex formulas and then you're like, wait, how does this work? And you kind of have to reverse engineer it for yourself. Okay, let's keep moving Wait, here. Heather, real quick. So here's just a little bit of math here. So I was looking at like this one, for example. So I assume that how this works is you can see that this biweekly $2,000 pays out three times. The first of the month is here, 14 days later would be here the second instance, and then 14 days later would be here. So you can see that in this instance, if, if it just paid out, not necessarily accounting for weekends, you'd get a third payout in January on a biweekly, um, two thousand dollars in january hmm. okay thanks randy so roger asks will you be releasing a tiller community solutions add-in for excel possibly that is a really interesting question um so we don't have plans right now to to build a tiller community solutions add-in for excel a lot of the tiller community solutions features are we are working on moving into the tiller foundation template just to consolidate or sorry, the Tiller money feeds add-on to consolidate um, our add-on footprint a little bit. Um, so that's over the next you know year, months sort of timeline for Google Sheets. Um, and so rather than building a community solutions add-in for Excel that we would then you know likely roll the features into the um, Excel add-in later, like we probably just won't release you know those features in a separate add-in because um, it you know we're just trying to clean things up a bit, but the community solutions available for Excel right now, once again, you can just use that manual workflow of copying them in. We do anticipate having that capability available in the add-in at some point. I don't have specific timelines on that, but Excel is a big um, point of focus for us in the coming year, as well as some, some other points of focus too, which I can't share too much about our roadmap, but, um, but yeah, I, I think just to answer your question there, I don't think we'll actually have a separate add-in for Excel um, the way that we do for Google Sheets right now. All right, Clarence asks, can I add additional incomes and expenses? I'm guessing you mean categories. Yes, absolutely. You just add additional categories um, to the category sheet. If you're, if you're speaking specifically of like maybe transactions that we can't automate, uh, then you can use the Tiller Money Feeds add-on to manually add transactions. 
can also bulk sort of like import transactions by copying and pasting from a CSV file. There's also some CSV import options in the Tiller Community Solutions um, add-on for Google Sheets. Good questions there. Uh, let's see. I'm just kind of digging through these. I'll definitely be posting all of these questions in the community in the resource that you'll get tomorrow. And so I'll make sure that they all get an answer. I'm just trying to find the best ones that are um, good, you know, best ones for the, the live discussion here. Um, I spent the last two years learning. What is the best way to change fix categories? Randy, do you want to speak to this one? We have a few options for fixing or renaming categories. Yeah, so um, you can start by changing them just directly in this category sheet. The downside or the issue with that is that you might have used that uh, category name multiple times in your transactions history, and it might actually, if you use the savings budget, it might be in there as well. So there, there are some issues with changing it here because you have to kind of do a full document find and replace. Um, in the Tiller Community Solution add-on here, I've got it open. There are some workflows that you might find helpful. So if you go over to this tools here, there's a whole uh, set of workflows called rename category. And these are pretty cool. Um, you can basically take a category. There's two, two options here, either rename or merge. Um, rename allows you to just pick something like, uh, you know, um, donations and, you know, you could just say charity. And essentially it does a find and replace in all the relevant places in your sheet um, to the new name. So that's kind of a single click way to do it. Another thing that's pretty cool is you can merge two categories. So sometimes you create one and you're like, you know what, I don't need a dog and a cat category. I just need a pets category. Um, so in that case, you can basically say, um, like let's just say the dog and the cats example. Um, before you run this, I would create a new category called pets. And then I would select here the dog category and say, move it into pets and then merge and then take the cats category, select pets here and do merge. But that allows you to do consolidation um, when you wanna basically uh, to maybe be less granular on specific items. Anything to add, Heather? Did you talk about just like a basic find replace? Yeah, like that's what I said. Okay. Sorry, uh, but again, it. I just want to be clear, the issue with find and replace is it really is just you, you might not realize how many places that it those those words are in your sheet, the transaction sheet, the category sheet, obviously, maybe multiple uses in your transaction sheet. Uh, savings budget has a sheet called budget journal, which um, it kind of relies on to track changes that you made, it would need to change there as well, and, and maybe other places. Sweet, thank you. We're getting a lot of questions about people wanting a Tiller Money hat. So I'm gonna check with our marketing and swag folks about that. Um, Rachel asks, in the yearly sheet, budgeted cash flow and actual cash flow, is that just income minus expenses? Uh, so Randy, if you'll just show the yearly sheet there, budgeted cash flow and actual cash flow. So budgeted cash flow, maybe pick uh, 2022 or 2023 in the year option there and we can just set it back to January. So the budgeted cash flow is all based on those budget targets that you set in the category sheet for any categories that are visible, meaning that they're not marked as hide from reports and they're not a transfer type. So it's only looking at income and expense and categories that are not hidden. And so it's the total income minus the total expense. Um, that is the budgeted cash flow. The actual cash flow is the um, actual income from your categorized transactions minus the actual expenses from your categorized transactions. Once again, as long as the categories are not marked as hide and they're not transfers. So transfers don't show up on the budget sheets at all. That's just a, a default. And if you mark something as hide from reports, it's not gonna show up on the budget sheets. So hopefully that answers your question there, Rachel. Good question. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. Got a couple, we've got time for a couple more questions here. Reshare the link to the help article you referenced at the start of the webinar. Yes, that will come in the resources email that you'll get tomorrow. It usually gets sent automatically about 24 hours, like after the start time. So like 12 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow, you should have an email in your inbox that will have a link 
uh, that will be pointing you to a topic in the community that will have both the video recording of the session as well as several resources, including a link to that, that help article that shares the different options as well as a link to the content for the budget plan that Joseph built for both Google Sheets and Excel. Um, see here. So shortcuts or best practices for categorization, automating as much as possible. Randy, I don't know if you have thoughts, like initially what comes to mind is AutoCAD. Definitely, if you're not using that yet, that's in the Tiller Money Feeds add-on. You can, you can add it. Um, I don't know if you want to share a little bit more while I just kind of read through and find a couple other questions we can try to get through. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure this is going to load since this is really Heather's sheet. Um, it probably won't. Yeah. Let me just see. It'll, real quick. it'll want you to some... link it. You can link it if you want. It won't like it won't hurt anything. But you can just not add any accounts. Oh, hold on. Uh, um, the come on. Uh, link it. Yeah, you can link it, and then just skip the step of adding accounts, and then you should be able okay. to get to AutoCAD. Um. Yeah, so let's just go down here, skip for now. Uh, so um, AutoCAD, you can obviously manually come in here. Uh, there's this tool is very powerful. You can add pretty complex rules. Um, but one thing that maybe isn't obvious is that in sheets in the uh, in the Tiller Money Feeds add on, there are some kind of helper uh, helper workflows here that can help you build rules quickly for AutoCAD. Uh, Let's see, um, one example is uh, if you had something like these, these transactions here and they weren't consistent on how they were um, described, you can kind of click multiple things. Like let's just say it was like Starbucks for one transaction, S bucks. Uh, you can use this rule from selection workflow and it'll kind of find out the common thing between multiple selections and help you build a rule. So here it could see that shell was kind of the common uh, word in those. And you can say, okay, well, I want a rule for shell being, uh, I thought there was auto and gas somewhere. I'm just not quite sure. Right at it. the top. Oh yeah, look, it's already selected. Uh, but then you can create the rule here. There's also some, um, I think actually most of the transactions are categorized here. So this won't work, but you can also click this rules from past 90 days and it will look for uncategorized um, transactions that have kind of recurring descriptions and sort of help you set up um it's it'll help you recognize okay well there's you know you often go to again like starbucks or or uh, a certain restaurant and and allow you to build uh rules kind of in batches mm -hmm. and finally there's kind of a powerful rule builder here where you could say um, you can make your own rules you know amazon is uh you know something or you can come in here and have even more sort of advanced uh, filter criteria Cool. Thanks, Randy. Um, so we'll just a couple more questions here. Just quick ones. Uh, Abby asks, will, be a, will there be a summary of Q&A? So now, yes. So once again, I'll be putting all the questions in the community and then um, and then I'll answer them. It'll be, it'll be quite a lot, but I, I'll be happy to do that. Um, and then someone asked if you can just quickly show how to get the community solutions again in Google Sheets. They missed the first few minutes. Yeah, I mean, the easiest way to do that is just to go into the community and type in, um, let's see here, just uh, Tiller Community Solutions. And you'll get this help article right at the top, Tiller Community Solutions add-on. And here you'll see the install steps. And here's the link to the, uh, the listing in the Google Store. And then you get that open it from the extensions menu. You can also oh, yeah, go sorry. once you have it. Once you have it, yeah, it's just right here. Total Community Solutions, and you can launch it. You can also go, Randy, from extensions, add-ons, and then get add-ons at the top, and then you can search for Tiller Community Solutions there, and that's um, that's pretty quick. All Enough. right. Well, I think um, that is all the time we have for for the questions. Those are some great questions. We'll be sending a link to resources, including all the answers to these Q&As, additional resources, and recording of this session tomorrow. We really appreciate you all for joining. Thanks so much, Joseph, for joining us today to answer budget plan questions and for building the budget plan and for everything that you do to help folks in the community. You're such an integral part of that community. Thanks, Randy, for your demos and hope everyone has a 
happy holidays. And yeah, definitely reach out if y'all have additional questions about getting ready for the new year. Thanks, thanks everyone. And thanks, Joseph. Uh, Joseph's going to be a one year uh, superhero next month. So, really Woo. lucky to have him. Woohoo! <laughs> happy All holidays. Right. Yeah, happy holidays. you too. See y'all. See you guys. Take